Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and welcome in the next video in the INAV from Flash to Flight series. In the previous episodes we covered topics like flashing, basic hardware setup, mixer, outputs, calibration and orientation. And today, today it's time to work on the receiver and on the modes. First of all, the good old days where we were using PWM or PPM receivers are long way gone. We will not be even talking even for the slightest second about them. And we will be talking only about the serial based receivers like the Crossfire, like the R9, like the FreeSky S-Bus, like the, I don't know, Ghost or Express LRS. All of them are based and connected to the serial port, which usually also supports the basic telemetry so we're gonna talk for a second about that as well. However, the problem is that every receiver type and the receiver protocol is slightly different and you have to put a slightly different configuration to make that work. So we will not cover every possible combination because this is just too much. Today I will be connecting the Immersion RC Ghost, but for the protocols and receivers like TBS Crossfire or just standard FreeSky SBUS, the procedure is very 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 similar it will differ only in some of the uh, settings and most probably how you're gonna connect your receiver to the serial port so let's go first of all here on the ports tab let's verify that you have the rx serial rx checked at on the port that you are using to connect your receiver. Like I mentioned before, I'm using the uh, Immersion RC Ghost. So all, what I had to do is I had to connect the serial output from the receiver to the TX pad on the serial port 3. If you are using the Crossfire, you probably had to connect the X and RX pads. If you are using SBUS, it's only RX pad. And if you are using F port, it's probably also the TX pad, which is the bidirectional uh, half dufle duplex protocol. When we have this thing connected and set up over here, it's time to go to the receiver tab and check what we have set up over here. By default, it's usually SBUS. Like I mentioned, I'm using the GHST. Uh, so I'm checking the GHST and you have to decide if you are using the SBUS or maybe IBUS for the FlySky, Crossfire, F-Port, F-Port 2 or whatever else you have over there. Also, try to leave those settings by default because by default INAV will use inverted uh, serial port if the protocol by default requires it. For example, the GHST is not inverted, so I'm leaving this to off. But if I would set SBUS and leave it off, it would try to invert the serial port because by default the SBUS is the inverted protocol. However, I am lucky, I do not have to worry about that. And usually in almost every possible case, besides those strange F port and F port 2 cases, you should leave it at off. So let me leave it to GHST and also serial receiver half duplex. This is another thing that depends on the protocol. Protocols like GHST and the F port require to have it either on auto or on on because they are half duplex that use only one pass of the serial ports. However, with the crossfire, leave it to auto because by default crossfire is the is not a half duplex, it's the full duplex or leave it to on, but auto will work either way. So now let's save and reboot and let me get my radio. This is the moment when I have to power up my radio because if I want to check the receiver, I have to have the radio enabled and because my receiver is connected to the 5 volt pad that is not powered by the USB I also have to power the quadcopter from the battery and now after checking what's happening let's see if everything is working you heard the beep let's change to the other screen and here first of all the red icon of the face safe mode is gone and when i will move the 
sticks, we will see that things are happening over there. And this is basically all you really have to check and verify on the receiver mode, because you rather do not have to change any of the settings over here. Maybe if you are very much into the racing or the flippity floppy, you can lower the RC deadband to lower values like one or two, but this really depends on the quality of the your radio signal. And you also do not have to modify the expo or your expo over here to the problems of the expo but we will go into the rate and the PID tuning tab later. What you might have to do is depending on the protocol and the configuration of your receiver, check the RSSI channel. If your receiver is injecting the RSSI or link quality into one of the RC channels, like for example, my ghost is doing this on the channel 12, but we will not be doing this with the channel 12 because Ghost also injects the link quality as part of the protocol. I'm leaving this disabled. Uh, the same goes for, for example, Crossfire, which has the link quality and the RSSI as part of the protocol, and you do not have to assign a separate channel only to transfer the RSSI. However, with the older receivers, like all the SBUS receivers, only SBUS receivers, you will have to select a channel which carries the RSSI if you want to have the RSSI. And this basically ends up our experience with the receiver tab. If it's working, then it's working and if you, if you do not have a super legacy, super old setup that just does super strange thing to the channel, you are over. Now, now it's time to work on the, guess what, on the failsafe, because by default INAF comes pre-configured with the land procedure and this is not what we really want. Uh, this is a safe procedure, however, if, you, if we are setting up something without the GPS and the magnetometer, the correct way for the fail-safe handling is the drop. If you are just flying without the GPS and the GPS capabilities, you do want to drop when the signal is lost. If, however, you do have GPS and our configuration has the magnetometer and has the GPS, the correct way is to have the return to home because we do want our drone to return to home and land after there is something wrong with the radio link. So let, in our case, select return to home Save and reboot. And now it's time to set up the basic modes for our drone. I will be using a separate AUX channel for arming, which is on the channel 6, and I will be using one switch to select different flight modes on channel 5. And on top of that, different modes, but we will not really be going into all the details about all the possible flight modes, that's just too much. Anyhow, the most interesting thing is, of course, possibility to arm, and this is done by the R mode and we have to add the range on the channel 6. I have the channel 6 on the switch. So I want to be armed when I have the, in my case, SB switch on either mid or max position or the high position. So I have to save it and now probably because I do remember not to have any propellers on my, uh, on my motors. You see the noise? It's armed, and but I knew what I was doing. Uh, if you are into safety, you can also use the pre-arm mode. The pre-arm allows you to increase the safety by having, for example, two different uh, switches switched on for arming. I, for example, have the on the channel 8 the two-position switch on the my transmitter. So if I will configure the channel 8 on the pre-arm, then I will be able to arm only when two switches are on. Okay, it's saved. See, I switched the arm channel, nothing happened. But when I switch the pre-arm channel and then the arm channel, 
arming was successful. And now it's time for the modes. I'm usually flying with the following configuration. I want to have the position hold po uh, capability on one position on one position of the uh, of the switch. I want to have acro on the second, and I want to have return to home on the third. Luckily, with INAV, it's super simple to set up because the flight modes by default are self enclosed. You do not have to have any. Special cases. First of all, I want to have the nav post hold, uh, position hold on the channel 5 on the top position. This is why all I have to do is go into the post hold, set the slider on the channel 5 to this value and save. Now after arming, every time I will move the switch C to the top position, position hold and altitude hold will engage simultaneously. If you really, if you do not trust us, then you can also combine the nav alt hold with the position hold, but that's not really required. By default, INAV engages all the modes below that, so you do not have to worry about the angle at all. Next one, I want to have in this position, in the middle position, the acro possibility. So I just want to do the flippity floppy. And this is why I cannot assign any flight modes to this middle position on the channel 5. The acro mode is engaged only when none other flight modes like the angle, horizon, position hold, alt hold or the waypoints or the return to home is engaged. So I'm leaving this one unassigned. And finally, on the third position, I want to have return to home because I got bored with flying two kilometers outside uh, of my visible range. I just want to flip the switch and make the INAV go home. So what all I have to do is at this mid position, this position for the return to home mode and that's all. So what we did, we have the position hold, we had acro and we have return to home. Bear in mind, as long as you are not armed and in the air, those modes will not turn blue. They are engaged only after you are armed. You want a proof? Not turning blue? Now, ah, I forgot I have the pre-arm. Now I have armed and now turning into the position hold resulted in the position hold. However, please be careful with those experiments and always perform them without any propellers on your motors. Always, 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 or rather never, 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 never have propellers while doing this kind of the test because you don't want to have stuff cut with the propellers. By the way, you probably heard that the motors were winding up. This is because there were no propellers because the INAF was trying to adjust the altitude, but without motors, it was just going crazy. This is expected. And now with all that in mind, well, there is only one final thing to say to you. Uh, you will not be able to arm if you have NAV post hold enabled or any other GPS assisted mode enabled. You see, right now I have NAV post hold in the enabled state and if I will go into the setup tab, you see that navigation is not safe. Why navigation is not safe in this case? Because the position hold is on. If I will switch it, to off, to, I switch just to the acro, you see that navigation is safe, is off, all the marks are green, that means that I will be able to arm if I will really want to. <sighs> By the same example, switching to return to home, I have return to home on the correct position, one more time, navigation is not safe. To be able to arm, you have to have the GPS fix and you cannot have any of the GPS assisted flight modes enabled by default. And that ends this part of the INAF from Flash to Flight series. In the next episode, we will probably work on the DJI Digital OSD and some words about the analog OSD as well, because we are getting closer and closer to be able to put our drone with INAF and with GPS into the air and have some real nice fun with it. So, until the next one. Bye-bye.